All right, so I mentioned a minute ago that I actually haven't created a wallet yet to deploy this contract to, which is kind of important if we want to go through with this. So now I need to get myself an account. I'm going to be deploying this to the testnet. I'm not going to put it on the WAX mainnet. We can get a WAX testnet account by going to waxsweden.org. If you just type get testnet WAX account into Google, it'll bring this right up for you. So as you can see on waxsweden.org, it gives you a link right here that you just have to copy and paste. And then all you have to do now is actually replace this last string at the end with the brackets around it that says account. We can just erase that and replace that with the name of the account that we want. So in this video, I'm going to do code tutorial. Let's see if that's available. Succeeded. All right. And you can see that it gave me public and private key pair. I'm going to copy this and paste it. Um, obviously, if you're creating real accounts, you don't want people seeing this info, but I don't care since this is just a tutorial and I'm not worried about it. So I'm just going to create a text file, open it up. Uh, by the way, I probably should have mentioned before that I use Sublime Text for my smart contracts and Visual Studio Code for most of my like React front-end stuff. I would recommend one of those two for whatever you want to do. Um, I probably should have mentioned that a while ago. All right, so now I've copy and pasted my stuff. And what I got to do is import this private key. I'm going to do the active key. I'll import this private key into CLEOS. So I have to do CLEOS. Let's see if I remember the command. Import CLEOS wallet import dash n coding tutorial. All right, so now I just I just paste the private key in. I hit I hit paste. You're not going to see anything, but now I'm going to hit enter. <laughs> see what I mean? This is really annoying. You have to unlock it all the time. So now we have to do CLEOS wallet unlock dash n coding tutorial. Just going to ask for the password from that file before. Now I've copied and pasted the password in. So now I'm going to import the private key again. If I just hit up a couple times, import private key. Imported private key. All right, so now it's in my wallet. I'll be able to use the code tutorial username now within my wallet. So I'm basically ready to deploy the contract. And again, I'm going to be copying and pasting my command for deploying the contract because I don't see any reason why you have to master the syntax of these commands. All right, so this is kind of important here. Uh, before I actually deploy this, uh, hopefully the wallet doesn't lock on me again while I'm running my mouth, but um, before, when we downloaded the software and we installed the, the CLEOS stuff, it installed a few binaries and all that, now, this is something that confused me a lot when I was a beginner, and I'm sure it's probably going to confuse a lot of other people, but you're like running your own blockchain on your own computer when you install that stuff and you start running it. Um, so when you go to deploy a contract, sometimes it might say it's deployed and you're like looking on the chain, you don't see it anywhere and you're all messed up in the head. Like, where is my contract? It says it's deployed. I don't see it on wax. I don't see it on the test net. What's going on? Well, when you run the software in your own computer and you're running what's called a local node os instance node os is like one of the programs you downloaded before that runs the blockchain you're literally running your own blockchain like on your own computer that you're connected to and no one else is it's basically just for testing and it's useless for anything outside of that you're not connected to the real world you just have this like fantasy blockchain that you made on your own computer that doesn't matter for anything um so sometimes if you don't know what you're doing, you're actually deploying stuff to that blockchain, like your own computer, which is useless, right? What's that doing for you? Um, so you want to make sure you're deploying to the blockchain that you actually want to put the contract on. In this case, that's the testnet. So what I do is I just type CLEOS for the command, and then you could put this flag called dash U, and then you put the name, the link to the node the API node or RPC node or whatever that you want to submit this transaction to. So since I'm deploying to the test net, I'm just going to copy and paste 
the testnet link that I want to actually deploy this contract to. So I'm going to be submitting this transaction to testnet.waxsweden.org and that ensures that I know my transaction is getting submitted to the WAX testnet, which is exactly where I want it to be submitted. If I didn't put this dash u testnet link, it could be gone. It's, it's going to go wherever the default is on my computer. It could be my local machine. It could be the WAX mainnet. I don't know. I don't know how I set this thing up. I probably screwed it up, right? So you'll probably do the same thing. Uh, this is a way that you can make sure you know exactly where your transaction is going. So uh, next we have to put set contract and the name of the account where we want the contract to go. So for me, that's code tutorial. That's the name of my WAX account. Now space. And now we have to put a path to the WASM file. You know what? I'm just going to open up another command terminal here. Just type CD into tutorial contracts. Now type the PWD command. Now that I'm in that right folder. And this is this is what I need to put right here. I can just copy and paste this. There's a, a little trick for you in case you don't want to type it out. So now I put that here. This is where the contract is located. Uh, that's the folder that it's located in. Now I have to type space. And now I have to put the name of the WASM file. So I did code tutorial.wasm, I believe. And then now dash dash ABI. And now I have to put the name of the ABI file as well, which should also be code tutorial.abi. Uh, last thing, dash p. That means we're about to say who's giving the permission to do this, like who's signing this transaction. We need to have the key for this in our wallet. So obviously, you know, that's why we just imported the private key a minute ago. Uh, permission is going to be from code tutorial at active because I imported the active key. If you imported the owner key for some reason, you would put code to, you'd put your account at owner. Um, it's basically just the account name at the permission name. Now we hit enter. If it's not locked yet, I'm going to get an error that I don't have enough RAM. Right, account, exactly. I didn't buy any RAM for my account, right? It's It needs RAM for you to actually store this contract. And it's going to tell you exactly how much you need. You have insufficient RAM. You need 392,390 bytes, and you only have basically none. So I have to buy like 400,000 bytes of RAM right now. The bigger your contract, the more RAM you need. That's how that works. Okay, so right here in the same link that we used before to get the account, uh, we can also get ourselves some wax tokens on the testnet so we can say uh, just replace this create account part with i believe it's get token you can do this twice a day and you can get 500 wax each time uh, so we just got ourselves 500 wax in our testnet account all right so i just actually did it twice so we should have a thousand wax in our code tutorial testnet account on wax and if we go to blocks and we switch the chain to wax testnet. Now you can do this stuff through the command line too, but I mean, why bother? So if we go to code tutorial, we've got a thousand wax in here. And now we can buy ourselves some RAM. So in order to do that, I actually need to import my code tutorial wallet into Anchor using the private key that it gave me before. So I'm just opening up my Anchor wallet. I've connected to the Wax testnet. I'm going to go to Manage Wallets. I'm going to import an account. Existing account, import private key, and then type this key in. Uh, code tutorial.active is attached to the key. I could just check it and import the account. And now it's imported into the Anchor once I enter my password. All right, the wallet is imported and selected in Anchor. I'm going to go back to Blocks now and just log in with the code tutorial wallet. Go to the wallet tab, buy myself some RAM. I'll uh, just buy myself like 500,000 bytes. So five, I can't type 500,000 bytes worth of RAM. You know what, let's just call it a million because I'm going to be adding more to the contract. Now I've got myself some RAM on the test, test net and while we're at it, 
going to need CPU and net for these contract deployment transactions and all that stuff. So let's get myself like 200 wax worth of CPU and I don't know, 50 wax worth of net. Now we've got the resources we need. Uh, the wallet's probably locked on me again, which is really annoying. Uh, if I just hit up on my keyboard, it'll bring me back to this previous transaction here. Hit enter. And you can see, and it says transaction executed locally, but may not be confirmed on the network yet, but it went through. So if we refresh this page now, or actually if we just go back to the account tab, we should see a contract tab, and we do. Right next to account here on code tutorial, see how it says account, we now have a tab called contract. And you can see we've got a table called messages, just like we defined in the contract. And we've got this tab called actions where you have the add message action and the ABI file, which, like I said, it just kind of gives you a brief overview of the contract. So it tells us that there's a struct called add message with a couple of fields called user and message in it, a table called messages. It basically just tells you all the stuff that you defined. It tells other people, hey, here's how you here's what this contract's about. All right. So if we go back to actions now, we should be able to add a message to the table. So let's try it out. Well, remember the first thing that we checked here was, well, we want the authorization of the user, whatever username gets typed in here. Well, I'm using, I'm using the code tutorial wallet, so I shouldn't be able to do anything for any other user. So look, if I put Mike D crypto five here, and then I put, you know, some message, it should give me an error. It's going to say missing authority of Mike D Crypto 5 because I'm not Mike D Crypto 5. I'm code tutorial. All right, let's try and sign this. Missing authority of Mike D Crypto 5. Now there's another error. We're checking the message should be greater than or equal to 10 characters and less than or equal to 100. So if I make the message like two characters long, that should throw an error, right? It should say the message, it should say, your message is either too long or too short. Uh, but in order to get to that point, we have to first put the correct username. So let's put code tutorial. And we should get another error here that the message is too short. Your message was either too long or too short. And now if we make the message more than 10, but less than 100, or what, you know, whatever we defined it as. Let's say this is a message and we submit it. This should work if I didn't make any mistakes. Transaction was executed successfully. I'm just making up words. That's not even what it says. If we go back to tables now, we should see this message in the table and there it is. Look, that's cool, right? The ID, remember uh, we said, choose an available primary key for us. So, zero was available it's just going to auto increment this right so it chose an available one which is zero it made that the key and then now the message is this is a message and you can see code tutorial is the rampayer which we defined in this in place function where we put get self that means we want us to pay the ram uh, which is the only thing that we could have done we can't charge someone else without their permission we'll get into that later uh but this is this is like Step one, all the possibilities should probably go, be going through your head now. You just learned how to actually, you know, execute an action on the blockchain, store some information in the table. You've got like 95% of the work done now. All right. And now look, if we, if we do this again and we say uh, message number two, I just want to show you how the available primary key thing, it's going to select the next one. So the ID for this message should become one. So if we sign this, it went through. And if we go back, the ID for this one is one. Now, this is going to be important later on when we're going through how to index things and how to quickly find stuff. We'll get into that in a bit. Not important. And then real quick on this scope thing. Remember how we defined the scope? We defined it as get self dot value. Uh, that means code tutorial is the scope. If we change this scope, appear to be code not tutorial you know and we hit refresh we're not going to see any information because we're looking through the wrong lens now we're not looking through the right scope watch if i hit refresh 
Nothing's there. Why is that? The information's in the table, right? Well, yeah, it's there, but you're not looking through the right scope. So it's not just the contract. It's not just the table. It's also the scope that you have to make sure is correct. So code tutorial. And then it'll pop back up. There's our info. Cool. So what's next? Well, we learned how to install the software. We learned how to create a testnet account, get testnet wax, get testnet RAM, import things into the wallet, write a contract, a basic one, compile the contract, deploy the contract, even have a little action in the contract that stores some information. Next, let's talk about how to react to an event that happens on the blockchain, or I should say how to listen to an event that happens on the blockchain and then react to it. So for example, if you want to find out when someone sent tokens to your contract so that you can react by maybe sending something back to them. Let's get into that right now.